For our first messy craft today, we're using soap and bubbles. Not something you usually think of as being messy, but we can do it. We're just gonna add some paint. Now, however much paint you put in the cup, put that amount of dish soap in each one. Then add some water. Now give those a stir. Pick which color you want to start with. I'm going to start with blue. Then grab a straw, put it in. Don't drink it. You're going to blow it out like you're blowing up a balloon or like you're blowing a bubble. Ready? Look! <gasps> wow! As the bubbles travel across the paper, they'll pop and leave their cool bubble print. What do you think will happen if I use three straws at one time? Let's try it. <laughs> I'm gonna move these cups all over and blow more and more bubbles until I have a masterpiece. I could do this all day. I learned so much about what colors mixed together made other colors, and I made some beautiful colors in this messy, soapy painting. Here, the red and blue mixed together to make purple. Here, yellow and blue mixed together to make green. And I'm gonna have some really cool paintings at the end because as the bubbles on the paper, they're gonna leave behind a paint bubble trail. Now that our canvas is ready, our paint brushes. Today we're using darts. Ready? All right, let's do it. Woo! How many are left? Let's count them. One, two, three, four. We got this. Look, I went all the way around this blue one without hitting it. I'll get it this time. This is it. I can feel it. This is it. I can feel it. Now that we popped all of our balloons, let's take the balloons off so we can see the painting underneath. This is one beautiful mess. Oh, <laughs> hi, it's me, Kylie. I'm just in my backyard doing a bird watch. Whoa, look at that. Look Ooh, a flamingo. I can't believe it. <laughs> that was amazing. I didn't even know those were in my state. Oh, wow, look. Hmm? Sup, I'm a bald eagle. What you gonna do about it? <laughs> Ow. Tweet. You hear that? Tweet, tweet. <gasps> Whoa. Mm -hmm. Hey, it's a parrot. You can't hold me down. I love finding birds. I love birds that are just right around my house. <laughs> In fact, I have a lot of different bird feeders and even some bird Later. nests right here at my house. I can watch them through my windows. <gasps> Oh, hey, my bird feeder needs filled up. You wanna come with me? Let's go. Here's one of my bird feeders. There's different kind of bird feeders and different kind of bird food for different kinds of birds. This is just kind of a mix. Look, there's 
corn and sunflowers and other kinds of seeds in here. This is designed so that if a squirrel gets on it, it puts its heavy body right here and it shuts. That makes sure that the birds get the food and not the squirrels. Perfect. Dinner's ready, little birds. Come and get it. Want to see something so cool? I have two bird nests right here on my front porch. This nest was built by robins and I got to watch the mama robin every day. She and the daddy robin built the nest together and then she laid her eggs. She sat on them, which is called incubating them. And then one day they hatched <laughs> one at a time until all the baby robins were hatched. Then she stayed there to keep them nice and warm until they were ready to boop, hop out of the nest. You want to look at it? Come, come see. Look way up there. Birds don't live in nests like this. It's kind of like a crib for a tiny baby. It keeps all the little baby birds together in one place so the parents know how to feed them and where they are. It also keeps them nice and warm, protected, and camouflaged. Do you know what camouflage means? It means that you blend in to the environment around you so that anything that might want to come eat the little birds up can't even see them. Okay. Now, we're going to be very quiet and very gentle because there is a finch nest in my plant on my porch and it has eggs in it right now. Last time I saw it, there were five eggs. Let's see if there's any more today. Come on. The nest is right up in this plant. Talk about camouflage. I wouldn't have even known it was there, except one day I was sitting out here and I saw a mommy finch and a daddy finch building their nest right in here. Why don't you come peek very gently and very carefully, don't touch anything, and see how many eggs are in the nest today. <gasps> one, two, three, four, Five! <gasps> Five eggs, and look at that nest! Wow! Hey, I have an idea. What if we made our own bird nest today? <laughs> do you want to? Let's do it. To the porch. <laughs> to make this pretend nest today, I'm gonna start with a circle of cardboard. You're also going to need cardboard sticks, I have some tissue paper feathers, some cotton balls, some string, yarn, felt, whatever you want, glue, and some scissors. Birds make all kinds of different nests depending on what kind of bird they are. Some just dig a hole in the ground and that's their nest. Some put their babies in the hole of a tree. Some, like the robins and finches, and the nests we saw, make something called a cup nest. They make it with all sorts of things that they find. They make it with sticks and twigs. They make it with bark from trees. Maybe some old string or hair that they find. And they use all those things to build up, up, up the sides of their nests so that their babies have a nice, warm, safe place to live. Birds don't really use glue to put their nests together. Some birds use mud. Can you imagine having your bed made out of sticks and mud? <laughs> That'd be a funny bed. It's usually the mom bird who builds the nest, but the dad will help bring her supplies. Isn't that cool? They carry them in their beaks. 
When the outside of the nest is built, some birds put softer things on the inside, you know, to make like a soft, cozy place for their eggs. This could be their own feathers, or sometimes they find stuff called moss, or the fluff inside of different plants, maybe like a cattail. They can even use hair or fur from pets and stuff. Cool, huh? That gives the birds a nice cozy place. Once the nest is all laid, then guess what happens? Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> the mama bird lays her eggs. After the eggs incubate, they hatch. This happens when the tiny bird inside is old enough and strong enough to start pecking its way out of the egg. And then, oh, look, all the stuff to make a baby bird. Let's do it. Pom pom. A little beak. A wing. Feet. And eyes. The robins that were in that nest up there on my porch, when they were born, their eyes were shut. Isn't that funny? It took them a few days for their eyes to open up. At first, they wouldn't even know when their mom and dad were coming, except they would listen. And then whenever their mom and dad came and they heard them carrying a big worm, even though their eyes were shut, they would hear it and they would go. <laughs> and then the mom and dad would feed them. So cool. <laughs> the little birdie hatched. I bet it's excited for its brothers or sisters to hatch too. Have you seen any birds come to the feeder since we've been crafting? Hmm. Me either. Maybe, maybe we can make a couple more bird feeders together while we're here. Then we can put them in that bush over there and see if any birds come while we watch. Let's do it. For this bird feeder project, all you need is some peanut butter, nut butter, or you could use honey, some more bird seed, toilet paper rolls, and some string. Also, I'm gonna use a popsicle stick to spread my peanut butter. You could use something else if you wanted to. This is super easy and super fun. The first thing you're gonna do is cover your toilet paper roll in peanut butter. <laughs> mm. I heard something. Are the birds behind me? Did you see him? <gasps> Amazing. That kind of finch is called a house finch, which makes sense because uh, it's right by my house. <laughs> Did you hear that pretty bird song? Wow. This looks a little delicious, doesn't it? kind of like frosting a cake, except um, you're frosting a toilet paper roll. Okay, once you have your toilet paper roll all covered up, you're gonna roll it in the bird seed. It's kind of like the sprinkles on your cake. Cover it all up. Once it's nice and coated with bird seed, you're gonna take your string or your twine and put it right through like that. 
tie a knot. And then hang it. Hang it for the birds to find their new delicious treat. <laughs> Come on. I've seen a lot of birds in this bush, especially the new baby robins that just hatched. So we'll put this right there for them. Happy eating birds. I had so much fun learning and making about birds today with you. I love hanging out with you no matter what we do. <laughs> I hope that you have fun making all of these crafts and finding the birds wherever you live. I bet they're awesome. Whoa! No. Oh, uh, tweet, tweet, tweet. I've invited a very special guest scientist and artist into the backyard with me. It is <gasps> Dax. Are you excited to make some explosions with me? Awesome. The first thing we're gonna do is to play with baking soda and vinegar. These are two things that when you put them together, they have a reaction and they... Explode. <laughs> explode. So the first thing we're gonna do together, Dax, is to build a volcano. Ooh. Yeah. So this, this little cylinder is gonna be the very middle of our volcano. So we'll end up putting our experiment right in there, but we're gonna build an artistic volcano all the way around, okay? And I got some little clippings from our pine tree to add. We can make like a forest, and some river rocks, like and some, some sand. Some river rocks? Mm -hmm. Those look like our fire pit rocks. They are our fire pit rocks, and those are called lava rocks. Lava. Makes sense, because we're making a volcano. See all those holes they have? Well, how did the lava I think that this was once hot lava, and then when it cooled down, this is the rock that it became. Mm. And I thought maybe we would want to put like a cat mm. or a cat-sized rooster. What do you think? Yes, yes, very good. Okay, Dax, take this spoon and scoop up, this is baking soda, and put it right in. Like we, I eat. Oh, put it right in the cylinder. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Want to put a little bit more? Ooh, it kind of looks like snow on our volcano. Yeah, that could be snow. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we need to mix up our lava. What color should the lava be? Orange? Okay, stick here. I'll go get some orange food coloring. We're going to dye our vinegar the color that we want our lava to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Dax, mix it up for us. I'm gonna use the end of the spoon too. We'll both mix. Vinegar smells icky. Now, Dax, I want you to fill up the pipette. Can you tell our friend how to fill up a pipette? Squeeze the end and then you let it go. Yep, and then put it right in our volcano. <gasps> Lava! Whoa, it's erupting! I'm glad it's not getting on our rooster or our cat. Friend, what do you think would happen if we just poured some of this straight in there? Do you think it would be wild? Yeah. All right, let's try it. Whoa! It's gotta get on our cat. Oh no! Chicken cat, are you okay? Wow! This is a very active volcano. Dax, you ready to switch it up? Mm -hmm. We're gonna pour a little bit of vinegar in each one of these cups. Cool. All right, mix those up for me, Dax. Ooh, <laughs> Baking soda and vinegar are called reactants, Ooh. and the foam that's created when we combine them is called a product. This is a really fun and cool way that you can experiment with mixing colors. Dax has red, blue, and yellow. Those are the primary colors. And when we mix them together, we can make secondary colors like orange, purple, and green. And from there, we can make all the colors. 
Dash, you ready to mix some crazy fizzy colors with me? Yeah. All right. Let's take these out. Okay. is in those bubbles. What's in those bubbles is called carbon dioxide, and it's the gas that is created when we put the vinegar and the baking soda together. When we put them together, the gas is created, and it just like, it has to go somewhere. Do you ever feel like this? Do you ever feel like this? Like, all your energy, it just needs to come out. Do you ever feel like that? Yeah, I think you do too. I do. That's kind of what this chemical reaction is. All that gas has to go somewhere. Do you think we can make orange? Mm hmm Mmm, stir it up, stir it up. Can we get a good orange? Do you want to do an experiment where we can kind of see the effect of the gas that's made with vinegar and baking soda? I'll give you a little bit of a spoiler. There is an explosion involved. You wanna do it? Mm-hmm. You wanna do it? For this experiment, we're going to put in two tablespoons of baking soda and a half cup of vinegar in this plastic bag. Then we're gonna seal it up. What do you think will happen when all of the gas forms from the baking soda and vinegar reaction? Where's my helper? Dax! Oh. <laughs> There he is. The first thing we need to do is take a little yeah. bit of tissue. And Dax, we need two tablespoons. This is a cup. This is a half cup. We need this one. I need two level tablespoons right in the middle. Fill it all the way up. Shake it flat. Shake, 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 shake. Put it right in the middle. Awesome. One more. Fill it all the way up. Shake, shake, shake. Right in the middle. Perfect. We're gonna put that aside. Me. It does. Put that aside. Now we're gonna fill up a half cup of vinegar. You wanna try to pour that in? Okay. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Fill it all the way to the top. And bloop! Oh, good filling up. I didn't even spill it. Not even a drop. I'll pour it because it's so full. We're gonna make a little baking soda envelope. All right. Now, I'm gonna be so fast. Okay. I'm gonna drop this baking soda in. It's gonna go into the vinegar. It's going to cause a reaction. Sure. It's gonna cause a react. Don't do it yet. It's gonna cause a reaction where gas forms and we're gonna seal this up. The gas is gonna have nowhere to go and we're gonna see what happens. All right, Dax. One, two, three, go. Seal it up as fast as you can. The gas is filling up the bag. The gas is filling up the bag. What do you think? Good. Were you not expecting that? Our next explosion is elephant toothpaste. Dax! Dax! I need some help here! Hash Brown! Oh, Hash Brown's down here! I'm gonna start with a half cup of hydrogen peroxide in a clean water bottle, and Dax is going to add some drops of food coloring. Whoa! Whoa! You think we need that much? Mm. Perfect. Now we're gonna add about a tablespoon of dish soap. This goes well with our blue food coloring too, doesn't it? Elephant toothpaste, elephant toothpaste. Hey, is elephant toothpaste for elephant elephants to brush their teeth? I have three tablespoons of warm water, and Dax is going to add in one tablespoon of active yeast. All of it right in there. Are you ready? You ready? Okay. <gasps> That's amazing. What does it feel like? It feels really hot. 
It feels really hot. That's part of this chemical reaction. It just keeps going and going. It's kind of like it's making, it's forming a mountain. It does look like a mountain. It reminds me of the volcano we made earlier. That is an amazing chemical reaction and an amazing eruption. Next up for our explosion, we're going to make another cool piece of lava art. Dax! Dax! He's always <laughs> hiding. <laughs> Dax, can you pour this red water into the bottom of this jar? Mm -hmm. That's good. Now, this is oil, and water and oil do not mix together. So we're gonna see that. When we pour it in, they're gonna separate. So fill it up almost all the rest of the way with oil. So we see the bubbles sinking because of gravity. What's Gra gravity? Gravity will pull you back to planet Earth. So we're gonna do a magical trick here with a chemical reaction. We're gonna use these effervescent tablets and when they hit the water, there's gonna be gas that forms and the gas is gonna push the bubbles of water up, 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 up through the oil. And then move around and then the molecules will move. Absolutely. Let's start making the bubble move around. All right, do it. <gasps> Whoa, it's getting wild. It's getting wild. <gasps> wow. Gas is pushing those bubbles, those pockets of dyed red water up, 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 up through the oil. So cool. I'm gonna try to imagine that me and my whole family and you are at the beach right now. Okay, let's imagine. Are you ready? Hi, we're here on the beach. It worked. Imagining we're at the beach really worked. We're here. Well, in our imagination. Let's go put our feet in the water. Friends, it worked. We used our imagination to go to the beach. And now I think we should use that creativity to make some art. What do you think? Let's do it. This is a craft that's really easy to do. In fact, the last time Phil, Dax, and I were at the beach, we did this craft together. All you need is some sand and plaster of Paris. You don't need to be on the beach to do this. You can do this with sand from your yard or the sandbox. Whatever, it's fun either way. Let's make it. The first thing I'm gonna do is make a little bit of a dip in the sand with my hand like this. Then maybe you could find a really cool shell or something at the beach. You could do this with anything though. Put that down in the middle of your sand if you want it to be on the front of your cast. Press it in a little bit because when you pour in the casting, it is going to be in liquid form, so you don't want it to swim around in there. Now, mix your plaster of Paris. Mine is three parts plaster to one part water. Once your plaster is all mixed up, gently pour it in the little space you made for your cast. Did it. 
If you want to, at this point, you can add shells to the back of your plaster cast. I want to. And now, while it hardens, you just go play. Come on. And our plaster is dry. Now we're gonna lift it out of the sand cast and see what it looks like. Whoa. <gasps> cool. Rinse the extra sand off with some water. Let it dry you're going to have some amazing beach art. Should we try a different shape in the sand this time? Okay. What if this time we made one that was kind of spiky? I'm gonna make a big pile of sand and I'm gonna poke some holes down in it so that when I pour the plaster in, it fills up the holes and hopefully when it's dry, it'll have spikes on it. Let's try it. Here we go. Oh, I can't wait to see that one. I have enough plaster to make another one. Let's try. Let's try to make a swirl. I'm gonna put a little shell right in the middle. Cool. The plaster is dry. Ready to see what happened when we put the plaster in our sand cast? I am. This is the spiky one we made. There's spikes, let's rinse it off. <laughs> cool! The holes that I made in the sand turned into spikes on the plaster. It kind of looks like a turtle shell. I love it. For this one, I made a swirl in the sand. It kind of looks like a snail shell. Hi, it's me, Kylie. Welcome to my backyard. Today we are playing a maker game. What's that you say? A maker game? Yeah, a maker game. This maker game involves 10 mystery boxes of art supplies and this spinner. Look. When I spin it, it will randomly select a subject for a piece of artwork. A car? A boat? Hmm, a lot of transportation. <laughs> so, we'll find the mystery boxes, spin the wheel, and then make whatever the wheel says with whatever's in the box. I have to follow the rules. The only things I have with me that are a little extra are this crafting table, some water, and some paper towels. Ready? Okay, first thing we need to do is find box number one. Do you see it anywhere? Oh, <gasps> did you find it? All right, let's go. We got our spinner. We have our mystery art supply box number one. Let's spin first. <gasps> A flower? Pretty. All right, let's see what we're making this flower out of. Ready? Oh, okay, uh, glue, scissors, and uh, this board. There's not really anything to cut or glue onto this board. A flower. What if we used like 
leaves and petals and stuff to make a flower collage. Does that sound awesome? I think so too. All right, let's gather some stuff up. Oh, a flower. We could just glue that on there, but that's a little too easy. We'll make something a little more creative. flower with just glue and scissors and a board and nature. <laughs> I love it. Whoa. Does need to dry a little bit more though. All right. You stay here. We're off to find box number two. See anything? What? Oh, good eye. Number two, I wonder what this mystery box holds. Let's open up the art supplies first this time. Oh, it's one of my favorite things, paint. And let's see, we got water, we have paper towels, we got brushes in here. Hmm. Nothing to paint on, no canvas or anything. Uh, we'll come back to that problem. Let's spin the wheel. Is there anything you're especially hoping that we make today? We'll see. Ready? Oh no! Is that hamburger or monster? Hmm. Maybe we'll paint a monster eating a hamburger? <laughs> Let's do it. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. This is crazy because it's something I have never done before, but what if we used a leaf as our canvas? Do you want to? All right, let's try it. Monsters are fun because you can just be really creative. They're not real, so anything that comes out of your mind can be a monster. Um, monster, would you like some cheese on your hamburger? Uh, any lettuce, sir? Oh, okay, yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. coming up. What do you think? Should we give this hamburger eating monster a name? Hmm, looks like a fill to me. Mm -hmm. Bye, Phil. Enjoy your lunch. We gotta find box number three. Number three. Do you see it? Oh, oh, hi. Oh, also, I have a very, very cool friend here today. This is my friend, Ashton, and he's a maker too. He builds things. Today, he's building a new playset. Hi. Okay, box number three. Number three is <gasps> chalk. Cool, sidewalk chalk. Have you ever used this? Awesome. No sidewalks. Um, let's figure out what we're making. Ready? Slowing down, it's a, it's a train. Cool. Where can we draw a train with chalk? We need like a big flat surface. The fence, you're a genius. You are no longer sidewalk chalk. You are now fence chalk. Let's go. Have you ever ridden on a train? I see lots of them. I love watching them go by and wondering what's inside. We have one, two, three train cars. They kind of remind me 
of our boxes. So let's see, in train car number one, we'll have a flower. In train car two, we'll have a, a monster. I've never heard about a train car hauling monsters before. Oh, kind of looks like a cricket. Oh well, it's a monster cricket. And in car number three, I guess we would have a train. A train hauling a train. So, all right. What do you think? <laughs> the Maker Express. I love it. Let's find box number four. I've looked everywhere in my backyard. I can't find number four, so. We're going to the front. This game is super fun. <laughs> okay, number four. I see it. Look, good hiding spot for wheel or materials first. Mm -hmm. Let's do materials. All right. Oh. It's modeling clay. Oh, awesome. Oh, this will be really fun. All right, thanks for. Let's spin. What is it? <gasps> A boat? Cool. Got my handy dandy art table, and I'm ready to make a boat. First, however, I think I'm gonna make some water. Oh, and here's something funny. Let's make a little fish jumping out of the water. I'm gonna make a little pinch pot for the boat. So I'm gonna start with a sphere of clay and then I'm just gonna pinch, pinch, pinch. Make a little bowl or a, a little boat. And maybe some seats in the boat, a little place to sit. A spot for you and a spot for me. Uh, maybe an oar so we can row, row, and row our boat. <laughs> that fish better watch out. It is right in the line of travel. <laughs> okay, I think we're done. Let's see, that was box number four. So next we're looking for one, two, three, four, five. Box number five. Let's do it. Right, number five. Where are you? Oh, <laughs> number five, you found it. I tripped on it. Let's spin first this time. <gasps> A donut! <laughs> I wonder if we have like cake and icing in box number five, but I kind of don't think so. All right, number five. That's perfect for a donut, it's round. Do you know what this is? It's sand. It's colored sand. A colored sand donut? We could totally do that. Let's make it. So I think for my plan to work, we're gonna need to use some things we already got. We need some glue and the scissors from box one. Let's cut a hole in this donut. Donut. Donut hole. <laughs> so the way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna put a layer of glue down and then I'll pour some craft sand over the top and then I'll just keep doing that for the different colors. Exciting. Now the best part. Shake it off. Delish. You want a bite? Good. Oh, you got a little. 
Let's see, what box would be next? Number one, two, three, four, five, six. Number six. Let's go find it. Looking for the number six. Got it? Oh, there it is. Oh, I know what this is. I have been wanting to show you this for a long time. I don't know too much about how to do it yet because it's kind of new, but number six is a 3D printing pen. <laughs> it kind of works like a hot glue gun. Like it gets really hot, so you have to be really careful or have an adult help you. And it heats up these little plastic rods and then you can draw with it, but you're like making a plastic shape. In our case, we're gonna be making a plastic, oh, I don't know yet. Let me plug this in and then we'll spin. A robot? Fun! Let's do it. It's all ready to go. Now we pick our filament. What color should we use? A robot. Maybe this is cool silver. And we put it right back here. Kind of like you put a glue stick in a glue gun. Ready? Okay. I hit this button and it's gonna melt this plastic and start pushing it out. As it does that, I can start to draw my shapes. So far, it's just like drawing with an ordinary pen, isn't it? But because there's plastic in here, you can start building it up, up, up. This is gonna be my robot's little foot. I'm gonna weld the legs on. So I'm gonna put them like this and then surround them with plastic so that it all sticks together, hopefully. Let's see if he can stand up so far. <laughs> I love this robot. Let's build the body up a little bit higher. He's turning out so cute. I ran out of plastic. Time to reload. this little robot's body done. Now I'm just gonna go in with a different color and add a couple little details. <laughs> what do you think? Maybe we'll trim those antenna a little bit. Nope. Oh man, I think that's exactly what he sounds like. Oh, do you want to know what he just said in robot? He said, let's go find box number seven. Hmm. Seven is one of my favorite numbers. I just think it looks cool. Do you see it anywhere? What? Oh, fun. All right, seven. What do you hold? <gasps> rocks! These rocks look incredible for painting on, so let's see what we're gonna paint. I hope it's something cool, I hope it's something cool. <gasps> A snake? That's something cool. <gasps> what if we laid them out like a snake and then painted each one? Yeah, that'd be cool. All right, hmm. Maybe this could be the head and then we'll just make like a snakish body. love this rock snake and I'm gonna leave it right here and hope that someone sees it and is first like, ah! and then like, oh. <laughs> okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, what's next? 
8. Let's go find it. Number eight. <laughs> All right, number eight, what do you got for us? Oh, okay. Tape. Three different kinds of tape. Let's spin. A cupcake! <gasps> A tape cupcake? That's cool. Um, cool, but I'm not quite sure. Oh. Do you think we could use this tape and like these sticks and stuff to make a cupcake? <laughs> I mean, doesn't hurt to try. Let's see. Maybe that could be like the top? Okay, all right. Oh, I love that sound, listen. Okay. Oh, we could do leaves, like the little paper part that goes around a cupcake? That would look awesome. Look, they look kind of frilly like that. Let's do it. One thing I love about art is that you get to think in new ways. And that's one of the things that I especially love about this game we're playing. Even if it's something I'm like, ooh, I'm not sure that I'm as good at drawing that or making that as I would be like uh, a solar system. I'm really good at solar systems. That's okay because if I only ever made things that I knew I was good at making, guess what I'd just make all the time? Just solar system, just one thing. And I don't wanna just make one thing the whole rest of my life. Art is about learning and practicing and trying. And even if it doesn't look exactly perfect, great, great, great to you after it's done, the process of making it, that can be the perfect, great, great, great part. Okay, it's a pine cone leaf with a shell cherry on top with a stick candle cupcake. And I had a lot of fun making it. <laughs> Let's find our next box. Looking for nine, looking for nine. Didn't find a nine, but I found a disc. Okay, take a little break for some disc golf. Ready? Ah, oh, man. Oh, <laughs> look. Made it and gonna make it. All right, what do you think's in here? Oh, let's spin first. Ready? The suspense! A truck? A truck, all right. A truck. Okay, so maybe if we had like some boxes or like building blocks or something, that'd be really perfect. I know, I know! We didn't get any art materials, but there's other ways of making. Some people make music, some people make dances, and some people make drama. They act it out. Let's act out a truck. All right. Hmm. Should we like be the truck or drive a truck? I'm gonna drive a truck. Okay, so here's what I would do. I would like step up like it was really high. Sit down, seatbelt, keys. Grab the steering wheel, foot on the gas. I'm gonna act another one out, but this time I'm not gonna show you what the wheel tells me, okay? You're gonna have to guess. Oh, okay. Or, or this. 
before this? Do you have any guesses? Come look at the wheel. Dinosaur, did you guess right? Good job. Well, that was super fun. Nine, 10. Whoa, good job. Ready for this? Okay. Uh, okay. It's a big box. I have always wanted to play with these. They're these little styrofoam noodle things, kind of like a pool noodle, but there's something magical that happens with them. Watch this. If you get them just a little bit wet and then you join them together, you can build. Cool, huh? Let's see what we're building. A unicorn? That's a good way to go. All right, a unicorn. One last piece for this unicorn, and I think it's ready. Fly. Do unicorns fly? Sure, yeah, this one does. It's pretty cool. Recipe number one. Four cups of water. One and a half cups of corn syrup. And one cup dish soap. Number one, done. Recipe number two. Three cups water one fourth cup of dish soap, a fourth cup of cornstarch, and oh, a half a tablespoon baking powder. <laughs> cool. Recipe number two, finished. Recipe number three, four cups water, a half cup of glycerin, a half cup of soap, Number three is done. One more recipe to make so that we can compare them. Recipe number four. Three and three quarter cup of water, a half a teaspoon of baking powder, a half teaspoon rubbing alcohol, five tablespoons of dish soap, and a quarter teaspoon, little itty bit of xanthan gum. All of our bubble mixes are complete. Do you have any predictions? That means a guess on which one is going to be your favorite. Hmm. I can tell you which one's my favorite color. Look at how beautiful that is. I had to use a different kind of dish soap for this one than this one. Can you tell the color difference? I sure can. Hmm. I'm gonna guess that maybe number three works the best. I don't know why, I just like the number three. <laughs> All right, let's let these sit for a little while because they do better if they can rest and really get all mixed up in there. And while we wait, you and I are going to make some different bubble wands that we can test out too. <laughs> so many things to test today. <laughs> you guys wait over here. Supplies. Straws, pipe cleaners, yarn, duct tape, an old bottle, scissors, and um, oh yeah, if you have one, an old sock. The first thing we're gonna do is bend a bubble wand with our pipe cleaners. I'm gonna make one that looks like a bubble wand that I'm used to using. A circle with a little handle. Next, we're gonna make a bubble wand for giant bubbles. Big, huge, massive bubbles. Bubbles that are bigger than the container that they come in. The way that we're gonna do this is to use yarn and straws. Check it out. Take a straw. Thread your yarn through the straw like it's a big, long, straw-ish bead. Like that. Now, one more. By a little knot. Good to go. 
Next up, don't need this part. I'm gonna cut the end off of this so that we can dip this big bottle in the bubble and blow it this way. <laughs> Hello in there. I have another idea for this bottle besides just using it this way. I saw this online and I really wanna try it. I never have before. This is where we need our old sock. This is gonna be a sock you don't use anymore. Like maybe you lost the match or maybe there's a big hole in it. Don't go grabbing somebody else's sock and cutting it up, okay? Okay, you're gonna cut the end off like this. And then, once you're done trying this out, you can put this right on the end, dip that in the bubbles and see what happens. I can't wait till we try that together. Usually bubbles are spheres, they're round, but if we made the end a different shape, do you think we can make our bubbles a different shape? Let's try it. How about we try to make a square bubble? Just in case this square one doesn't work, I still wanna see if I can get a bubble that's a different shape than just round. So I'm going to make a complicated cube bubble wand. Ooh, a cube bubble wand. That's right, I need to cut 12 straws the same size, a little bit shorter. Oh, it's like giving a weird haircut. Now use your pipe cleaners to build a cube. Oh, I already have one made for us to look at. <laughs> Convenient. Cool, huh? All right, let's build it. When you get to the corners, you can just wrap that pipe cleaner right around. Hm, love a good pipe cleaner. Then we just trim these extra little bits and add a handle if you want to. Ah, there we go. We have two cube bubble wands. What do you think is gonna happen with these? <laughs> I don't know. But I think it's time to find out. Let's get our bubble solutions and start making some bubbles. <laughs> These look good and they smell so clean. I'm gonna mix them up just a very, very little bit to make sure that everything is nice and suspended and mixed up in the water, but I'm gonna be very gentle about it. I'm gonna try not to make a lot of bubbles before I wanna make bubbles, you know? I'm gonna test each bubble with each bubble blower. Let's start with our classic round bubble wand. In bubble solution number one. Whoa, well, it definitely works. Do you see that bubble film? It's stretched all the way across the circle. Now, we're gonna add some air. Ready? Ooh, it kind of works. We got a couple of bubbles. There they go. Ready for number two? All right. Got a good film. <laughs> that was ginormous! Number three, here we go. I'm gonna guess that maybe number three works the best. number four. Whoa, I can already tell that this film is thicker. Can you see it? Let's see if that makes a thicker, better bubble. Whoa. That bubble had quite a journey. Let's try a different wand. Thank you, circle. 
Let's try this bad boy. Number one. Ooh, that looks cool. Look. Boom, 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 boom. Number two. Oh. These seem to be popping pretty quickly. <laughs> Number three. Number three, you are underwhelming. Number four. Bloop. Who likes number one the best? Number two? Number three? Number four. I think I like number four the best. Let's keep trying different wands. This kind works a little bit better if you let it soak in the solution first for a little while, so I'm just gonna put it right in here. You get soaking. Still round, hmm. Wow. We made a square with bubbles. still turns into a circle. Let's try the sock. Put our bottle that way. Put the sock over the top. Secure with a rubber band. Now, I also saw where you could add a little bit of food coloring to the top of your sock. I don't know. We're gonna dip it in. a hash brown length bubble snake. <laughs> Time for the big bubble maker. Okay, okay. <gasps> There's a lot more things we can try. But that was so cool that all I want to do right now is make giant bubbles with you. <laughs> you want to do it? Okay, let's play. It's me, Kylie, and... <laughs> Do you see that huge bug? Get out of here, my friend is here. <sighs> I can't handle it. <sighs> we need to catch it. You wanna catch a bug with me? Let's make a bug catcher in the studio. Come on! All right, let's make this bug catcher. This is gonna be a little house where the bugs can live while we look at them. We're gonna make it out of something called plastic canvas. It looks like this. The reason we're using this is because it's sort of a mesh, which means it's one solid piece, but it has lots of little holes in it. These are in the shape of squares. 
This will help our bugs breathe while they're in our bug catcher. The first thing we're gonna do is to cut four equal, that means the same size and shape, rectangles out of our plastic mesh. One, two, three, four. Now, cut a piece of your lacing or string, however you're choosing to do this. I like the plastic lacing because you don't need a needle to thread it. It sticks together really well. You're gonna tie one knot on one end. Then, put two pieces of your plastic mesh together and string it through the first hole. Boop. Now they'll hang together on your string. Perfect. Then, you're just gonna go hole by hole and lace them together like this. First hole, perfect. Pull your lacing through and leave it so it loops around the side like that. Then just keep going until your whole side is strung together. The next thing I'm gonna do is take another piece of this plastic canvas and attach it the same way right here for a ceiling. We're almost done. We have three out of four sides on. That means we only have one left. So we're going to attach our last piece the same way on this side and then on this side. I'm so excited. There we go. All four of our walls are sewn together. Now we need to add a front and a back. We're gonna sew them on the same way with the lacing, just right on to each side. For the front though, we're gonna want to cut in a little door so that we can put our bugs in there really easily. Get ready. We're coming to find you. <laughs> Let's go. Got our bug catcher. Got my net. I lost the trail of our studio bug, but I bet we can find some other amazing bugs out here, don't you think? Let's go bug hunting. This big tree fell down in a storm that we had. I wonder if there's any bugs hanging around these branches. Bugs. You see anything? He's in the net, he's in the net. Okay, time to put him in here. I think you're really gonna like the house we made for you. You see him in there? Let's go find some more. <laughs> Do you have a favorite kind of bug? A ladybug? A buzz bee? Oh, how about a little ant? a grasshopper. Oh, you know what other kind of bug I love? Caterpillars. How about you? I think mine would be a butterfly or a lightning bug. I love those when they light up at night. My favorite. I really want to see a butterfly. Butterflies really like flowers. Maybe we should go somewhere where there's flowers, right? Oh! Okay. You're nice and safe, don't worry. There you go. Look at this bee. It's getting pollen, and it's going from one flower to the next. That helps the bee have food to eat, but it also helps the flowers. It pollinates them, which helps other flowers grow. Isn't that amazing? Look at that spider. He can't wait to get inside. Let me in, let me in. <laughs> you can come in, spider. Here you go. 
<laughs> We've seen a lot of bugs that like the sunshine and flowers and grass. Now we're gonna look for some bugs that like the cool darkness of underneath things. Let's flip over this stump and see if we can find any. Whoa! Oh my goodness. Amazing. Who knew there were so many bugs living in this one little under the stump world? Here's a grub. We found so many amazing bugs under there. I better put the stump back so that they stay nice and safe. Bye, thanks for showing us you. Still really wanna catch a butterfly. Oh my goodness. Wow. Oh! Look at him. Oh! Welcome to the family. Ouch. Whoa. We're okay. What an amazing world of bugs we've discovered. I'm gonna keep these guys just outside for a little while, and once I'm done looking at them, I'll let them go again. I'm really bummed that we didn't see a butterfly today, but what if, before you go, we make a butterfly together? Do you want to? Okay, we'll do a quick butterfly craft. Here's how you get it ready to start. To make the base for your symmetrical butterfly or bug, you're gonna need a big piece of construction paper, a smaller piece of printer paper, a glue stick, and a scissors. Start by folding your white paper in half. Cut out one side of your bug shape. Ta-da! Now, would you open that up it will be the full canvas for your bug. But until we're ready to paint, we're just gonna glue one side down to our construction paper. This will make a great canvas for when we're ready to do our painting. Boop. Boop. Once your canvas is ready, it's time to paint. We're just gonna paint the one side that's glued down. Then we'll squish it together, pull it apart for the final reveal. Here we go. Squish, 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 squish. And now it's time to see our butterfly. <gasps> I love it. finally caught one. I had so much fun making this bug catcher with you and finding bugs and painting this butterfly. I mean, finding this butterfly. <laughs> See you next time. Want to make more things together? Me too. K-Y-L-E-E. -E. That's me. Search Kylie Makes It for lots of fun art videos. Also, parents and educators, go to kyliemakesit.com. I have lots of things for you too. Like this video and subscribe. <laughs>